Uh, one thing nobody mentioned about Paul, but we all can agree he had the worst handwriting known to man. <laughs> it was Doug, who told me he got postcards over the years while was a world traveler, and the only word he could understand was the name of the city that Walt was in. <laughs> Dear Doug, I'm a man of the city that was on the And I say that because our next speaker is Michael Simmons, who I believe had to translate many of the handwriting from Walt. So he is an expert in hieroglyphics. Um, he is also a student of Walt's, and he is the artistic director of Rep Stage in Baltimore. You all know that Walt spent many years teaching in Baltimore, and Michael was there with him. And so with us now. Michael Simmons.
But it was great. It was great. And after each rehearsal, every rehearsal, <laughs> we'd all have drinks and dinner. <laughs> and a couple of more drinks. <laughs> and cigarettes on the fire escape. And, of course, a nightcap. And for me, this was all icing on the cake because I was a starving artist at the time. When Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira came to see the show at 40 West 22nd Street, um, I nearly crapped my pants because <laughs> they were out there and they had done these roles before. When they both came up and complimented me on my work, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I just did again. <laughs> Walt and Charles, who was my partner at the time, uh, we'd go on many vacations. We all like American history and architecture, uh, so Walt would do the itineraries. You know, did any of you know that Walt did itineraries? For 50 years he did itineraries. And on leisurely trips, you'd never have a moment to like run to the bathroom. <laughs> <the itinerary>. <laughs> <laughs> we would split the bill, I would drive, Walt would navigate with the maps that were 20 years or, or older. <laughs> We'd meet in our, one of our rooms for Nash. Walt had his rubbing alcohol bottle full of gin <laughs> and of the snacks that he packed for a week at home that had been in the freezer for two years. <laughs> We, we were on a guided tour of uh, President James Knox Polk's house. I found it very interesting. Why I did. And before we move on to the next room, the docent uh, would ask if there were any questions. <laughs> Walt would proceed to add to and correct the docent <laughs> on the information just given. <laughs> Why Walt knew about the ins and outs of James Knox Polk's life, I don't know. <laughs> and this didn't happen at just James Knox Polk's house. <laughs> but then he, he was, as we've heard, walking and talking, encyclopedia. Did professional photography for Spell. Wrote a book on acting, was a, was a print model. Spoke several languages, could sit down and play Mozart, Brahms, Beethoven on the piano from memory. There was also international travel with Walt, but I'll save that for the book. <laughs> <laughs> or the play that we're going to write. But, <laughs> and later came a real honor. I directed Walt. I don't know how it happened. We were most proud of the work we did on From Chekhov's Orchard. It was five short stories, Death for the Stage, by Chekhov, and uh, one that he trusted me to guide him. Uh, he was so relaxed into his acting, and I feel he did some very, very beautiful and heartfelt work. But then he was encouraged to do more. That was followed by a serving of verse, Gilbert without Sullivan, introducing Anton, and Lessons in Love featuring the beautiful Lynn Rogers. So I was very honored by that. When I became the artistic director of Rep Stage, a professional theater in Maryland, uh, of which I resigned from in May, so I'm, I'm free. <laughs> I'm freelance. You can hire me. I was finally able to give back to Walt and hire him to come down to direct a play that he wanted to direct for many, many, many years, ever since the days of HB Studios called Intelligence. Walt was my mentor. He was my dear friend. We were, to use his word, simpatico. He was in my corner. He is with me every day in how I approach art, and I must say in how I approach my life. Baby steps. You have to do the A before you can do the B, before you can do the C. The soup does not have to be drunk as hot as it is served. He sent me a couple of postcards this past fall telling me how much he wanted to come to see the play that I was acting in 
and how much he desired for us to drive to the Berkshires to see and stay with Steve and Marianne and to see all the fall colors. I will always consider myself blessed to have had Walt grace my life with his presence for over 25 years and to have met so many wonderful people along the way. Thank you. And put your minds, wrap your minds around this, think of Waltism. When we were in college, we wanted to collect him and put him in a book. He said such wonderful things, Michael said, and I'd like to add one of those now, too, along those lines of the soup. And Rusty remembered this one. You can't play a Chopin nocturne before you know your scales. <laughs> but Walt did bring people together. He loved having people at his house. He loved disparate. Everybody from all different types and he that he's doing it again today, he's bringing us all together. Uh, next up is uh, a good friend of mine and a good friend of Walt's and a good friend of the company is Mr. Louis Ramos. Help to share some <laughs> Walt's stories. Louis Ramos. So, well, there's a Puerto Rican kid from the South Bronx and the probably sat in common with an old Jewish guy. Um, apparently a lot. Everything. <clears throat> I saw, I walked into purchase along with my fellow students 37 years ago. And um, I was forever changed and transformed into a whole another person, you know. I had my attitude, I got to perform in high school and, and walk. Um, was there and by chance and we became friends and for life. He was a father figure, um, more my father than my own father. You know, I ran every big event by him. It's an honor to be here with the family and to like, and his friends and with you, sir. I salute you. Um, he was an extraordinary person. Um, I didn't, I never thought that this, the voice of God sounded like an old Jewish guy. <laughs> Really, what are you doing? How are you? What are you doing? And uh, and it was like that for 37 years. Um, he taught us a lot of things. You know, he, he, he taught, yeah, you want to one and be in the moment and tell the truth and look another person in the eye through your work, but you have to do that in your life first. You have to tell the truth in your life. You have to live in a certain manner in order to be able to have that in your life. And through all of our ups and downs, close ups and downs, and Eddie and mine, and Rusty and Timmy and all of us, we are those. That's that's those students. We were as much as children. We were his children. Um, there, he didn't have any children of his own. He had of his own. He had a niece and granddaughters and children that were of your yours. And uh, but we were his adopted children, and he cared about us as a father would. And for that, I'm, I'm grateful to him. Um, I ran every major event by him and talked to him about everything. I even got the pleasure of when he was at the hospital there, the old Jewish home, to come by. I told him, I was doing, was doing this one-man show, man, and playing 32 guys. And he was like, what? <laughs> and he like st st sat up in his chair as I tried to go through, look, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the guys going to go over here, then I'm going to, I got all of these things, how can I blend into each other, what do you think? And, and it was amazing because what happened, the point is not that I was telling him about the story, but what happened to him, he was transformed, he just kind of like stood up in his, in his chair, in, in, in his bed, and he listened, and I saw the guy that I met, with all the things that have happened to him, the eye, the this, the physical ailments. I saw the guy that I met for that 15, 20 minutes. Loretta was with me when I did it. And it, it, it just transformed him. He, he became my teacher again. Um, in the sense that I remember him. He was always my father, my teacher. I, he came to a play that I did. There were 800 people in the audience and there was 200 people standing at Arena Stage in Washington, D.C. And I kept listening for that thing, like Andy said, and I could hear it. <laughs> 800 people, you know, and I could hear them, and, and like Andy said, it's like that was the show that I wanted to just like blow out of the park, and I did. 
because we're all needing the tools to do that. I've done a lot of wonderful things in my life and helped a lot of people and um, done some of my best work because of what I've gotten from Walt. He told me, he talked about Walt Tisms, and he told me in, in his office at Purchase, he said, it's going to take you 25 years for you to come into your own as an actor. Are you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm all in. I knew, I had no other choice. There was no other choice for me. It was like, this, it, this was it. I don't have no, I had no plan B. I had no hedge fund to fall back on, no family with money, nothing. It was him. It was him and what him and I saw. So I found a kindred spirit. He saw me in him and I in him. We saw each other in each other because we approached the same way. Stay there, taking notes during his classes. Crazy. My fellow students were like, what are you doing? You know? And he was like, he just looked at me and smiled. <laughs> he knew what I was doing. He was, I was preparing myself for the rest of my life, and he was the guy. And he did something for me that um, I was doing the scene. The last little story, and I was doing the scene. And in the scene, it's from a golden boy, and um, the guy's a black fighter, and he's also loves music. And there were two sticks that I had planted in the scene, and I didn't know what if, I, if, I, if or when I was going to use them, but I grabbed them. And in the middle of the scene, while the girl was talking, I started to play the sticks like they were violin, and I was lost in what I was doing. And afterwards, Walt, fucking, he made a point of sit, pointing that out to me. And he, afterwards, even after the class, he pulled me aside. He said, that's it. That's what you want to do. That's what you want. You want to be free enough to do anything. You want to be free enough to be able to do anything. That anything is possible. Anything is plausible. I'm a kid from the South Bronx. I'm projects. I'm an actor. The lights are on in my home. There's food in my refrigerator. There, there, I'm able to help people financially. I'm able to help myself financially. I'm able to be a good person because of what I learned from this fucking old Jewish guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never, you know, he's old now. He's with me more because I hear him in my ear even more. And I'm sure that might happen to many of you, and it'll happen to you. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. <laughs> You'll hear him, and you go, hey, where are you going? Go on, you know, call your mother. <laughs> when my mother passed away, I called Walt. When, I, you know, when my father's had trouble, I called Walt. I had no other, no other place to go, really. You know, there was a time where I wasn't quite as attentive to his needs and what he needed for me as his son. Um, but we learned, you know, we learned. 37 years. You know, you guys have known him for a long time, served with him, and you saw all of that. And, you got to know what he did for us was unbelievable. What he did for the freedom that he gave us and the life that, he, that we have because of his teachings. And some of us are not actors. Some of us, we just, we, like everything that we did, we did love, passion, and we did fully because of what he taught us, what he gave us, and what he was able to impart. Um, so, Bobby, I love you. Que Dios te bendiga. Lo coja bien. Y aquí estoy, Luis. Te quiero mucho.
mother is Susan Riley, there, and my father is Andy. Um, my parents uh, both met at one of Walt's Riverside Park picnics. So, of course, Walt would always inform me that I would never have been born if it weren't for him. <laughs> Lenore would argue that she was actually the reason that I was born, and she brought the mother to New York and she introduced her to Walt. So. Um, my parents were both students. My father was a director of an actress. And um, whenever they told me about how they met, there would always be jokes about late night scene studies where mm -hmm. scenes did not get studied. <laughs> <laughs> but Walt was always the reason. Um, I knew Walt as a friend. For my entire life, he, att he attended important events, my baby naming, my mom and stuff, and every concert of my activity. Thank you. 